I'm John Madden. Uh, condolences to the family. You know, I'm sitting down here in front, and uh, I'm on the corner, and next to me is Joe Gibbs. Next to him is Dan Fouts. And the three of us were in the Hall of Fame because of Don Coryell. There's something missing. Didn't mean to start out that way. I met Don you know, in one of the early 60 years, one or two. And, you know, we're talking about 50 years now. And it was at the, it was at the Hall of Fame. It was at the, um, uh, excuse me, the Coach of the Year Clinic. And John McKay from USC was the Coach of the Year that year. And he was speaking on the I formation. And they'd won a national championship, and the I formation was the hot thing then. I was coaching at Hancock College, and, and you know, John McKay and the I, we all were, you know, everything's a copycat. We all had to have it. And so I had to, you know, listen, you know, you're writing notes, you know, I formation, seven, boom, boom. And then in the middle of his, his speech, he said, you know, he said, the I formation isn't mine. He said, Don Coriel was an assistant of mine, and he brought the I formation to USC, and he put it in, and he's really the father of the I formation. So, <clears throat> and he introduced Don. And so I look over there and see where Don is. Now, after the thing's over, everyone runs up to the podium to get more out of John McKay and the I formation. I figured, hell, I'm going to go over and talk to the guy that taught the guy about the I formation. So I went over and talked to Don Coriel. And I sat with him the rest of the clinic. And he, he told me everything that I needed to know about the I formation. They, you know, he shared. And, and, you know, you think of Air Coriel and all those things. But I think 50 years ago, Don Coriel invented the I formation. And we look at pro football today, and if you use two back, everyone is still using the I formation. And you know, so it's not only was you know his record and his college and his pros and his passing game, but there was a time where he was all about I formation power and running, and and we all learned a lot from that. And you know, in every Don was a football genius, and every genius has amazing concentration powers, and Don had amazing concentration powers. And when you have amazing concentration powers, you have some quirks that go with it. <laughs> and everyone and every player that ever played for him, coached with him, knows some of those quirks. You know, like there was a time he's doing a game plan and sitting at his desk, he's writing, 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 and food and eating wasn't a big deal to Don. He didn't have time, so he reaches down in the drawer and he pulls out an apple and it's rotten. It, I mean, it, he, he ate like half of it three months ago, and he's, and he's writing, and he's looking, and oh, he takes a bite, and I said, Don, that's rotten. He goes, oh, you know, throws it in me. And, he wasn't thinking about it. He wasn't thinking about the apple. He was, he was thinking about what he was doing. And his concentrated powers were, were amazing. He used, to, he used to, he lived on top of a hill, and he had a long driveway, and then the street. So what would happen, he, on, on garbage day, he would put the garbage can in the back of his white station wagon. He had a white station wagon. He would drive it down to the bottom of the hill, you know, and then the quirks that go with concentration, that go with genius, he would make a right turn and drive the garbage to work 90% of the time. And then uh, you talk about stink. We'd be in two-a-days right here at San Diego State, 
And, and after practice, Don would we'd all go out to dinner so we'd get in his car. <laughs> and on one of those garbage days, man, you'd get in that car and, and you'd pass out. I mean, you'd want to walk or run to dinner rather than ride with Don Coriel. And then he did the same thing. The other trick was lived on top of the hill, and Elisa would come out with Mindy. Mindy was about four then. So the idea was Don would drive Mindy down the hill, let her off, she would walk back up, and Elisa would stand up and watch this whole thing and take her out. Well, just like the garbage, <laughs> Mindy wanted to ride to school. She didn't want to stay home. So Mindy would get in the back and she would be quiet. So Don would get down there, forget Mindy was in it. Now this would happen, this would happen at least twice a week. And Don would come in to work and, and he had Mindy. And, and then he would have to call Lisa and say, I'm sorry, honey, I'm sorry, I didn't, and, and I got Mindy. Well, of course, Elisa knew he had Mindy. Elisa was watching from up there and watching him take that right and not let Mindy off. He's waiting for her. So now, poor Elisa, being the great wife she was, and, and she never said, all she did was smile, and she was one of the great people. And then she would drive and pick up Mindy, and, and Don would say, Mindy, and he, he loved Mindy like, you know, like you could tell that, that he loved his, his granddaughter. And, you know, he couldn't get mad at her, but, you know, he would just shake his head, and he would apologize, thank, kind of get mad at Mindy. And then the whole thing would be like two or three days later, we'd have the same thing. But that was Don, and that was concentration, and that was from a genius. And that, you know, as I was saying, that we all owe so much to him. And you can tell the, the players and the coaches that if you ever played for him or you ever coached for Don, he had respect for you and he had love for you. And it was a respect and a love that didn't go away. One of the jobs that I had as a defensive coordinator and assistant was I was in charge of summer jobs. So all the players had to have summer jobs. So now what I would do is I would take the best summer job and then I would give it to the best player. Then the next summer job, the next best player, and the next best player. So anyway, the, the best job back in those days was at Coca-Cola. So I have the Coca-Cola job. And it was, it was going to go to Haven Moses. He was our best player coming in. So Don comes up to me and he says, you got that job for Coca-Cola? I, I said, yeah, it's the best one we got. I'm going to give it to Haven Moses. He's the number one guy. And he said, he said, no, give it to Rod Dauhauer. I go, Rod Dauhauer? He graduated. He can't play for us anymore. <laughs> He's gone. Haven Moses is going to be, he's going to be our star. That's, that's what we are. That's who we are. We need players. And he goes, no, he said, Rod, Rod uh, just got cut by the 49ers. And uh, he's married and his wife's pregnant. He said he needs it. You know, I had never thought that way in my life. I mean, I never did. And. Don, you know, as everyone says, was the greatest competitor. But where a lot of people do what's best for them, and a lot of times what's best for the team, Don did what was right. Don was right. 